Derby Week. It's uh, all kinds of things, but uh, welcoming in Zach Kiefer from the Indy Star. Zach, how are you, sir? From the Athletic, actually. Oh, uh, yeah, man, yeah, I'm so – hard habits die old. Um, how, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good. Bob Kravitz can wrap my knuckles on Wednesday. He joins us every Wednesday, so he enjoys having something to, to beat on me about. Um, how long have you been with the Athletic now? Since 2019, so four years, is that right? Yeah, but I was with the Indy Star for about seven or eight before that. How how it, fortunate do you feel to be able to make that jump? Because that's that doesn't always work out for everybody in, in this business. Uh, but but a great move uh, for you from not that you needed to move from there, but uh, but being able to do that. Yeah, I, I was really lucky at the star. I had some great bosses and some great colleagues, and it wasn't easy, but um, the athletic's great. It's, it's kind of less less minutia, you know, less daily stuff, and kind of dig into the deeper, longer stories that I like to do, and um, hopefully that's kind of what we've set ourselves apart by doing. Yeah, uh, I'm a subscriber and have been, and Always suggest everyone else be as well. Uh, Zach covers the Colts, and the Colts got their guy. Uh, I, I thought that Anthony Richardson was going to be the guy. I did not like Will Levis. I did not think that they were going to have a chance to get anybody else, and that's how it ended up. And I think that, man, uh, the, the stories that we've seen about him bringing his family to Andy, I'm like, holy cow you don't see people doing that kind of thing and so he's already done some things that set himself apart uh and, and i think that maybe they got the guy or his the guy that they wanted for sure but maybe they got the guy they needed yeah it's gonna be a process and i think fans probably don't want to hear this on monday morning after the draft but there's gonna be some ups <laughs> and downs like and, and and his talent is undeniable the interesting thing is the Colts were very honest about the scouting process and assistant general manager Ed Dodds talked with him Saturday night. And he said, when he looked at him original, originally he was like, no, he was out on Richardson. He said, there's no resume, 13 games. And he said at one point in the scouting process, he asked the ask Richardson, when you have a clean pocket and you're missing this throw and this guy's wide open, why is that happening? And Richardson told him, like, there's so many things in my head. I, this coach is telling me to do this, and this coach is telling me to do this. And so I thought it was interesting that one of the top personnel execs from the Colts were kind of like, yeah, I didn't want him. And then over the process, not just the tape, but the interviews and the sit-downs with him, that kind of turned him. So they feel really good about him as a person, as a, as a leader for this team in the years to come. And believe me, they wouldn't have signed off on him unless they felt good about that. So it's not just a film when you're drafting a quarterback. It's everything else. And they really seem to buy into that part of him. Well, and, and because what people have to remember first and foremost, this is the guy that when he steps into a huddle and there are 34-year-old guys that have been in the league for 10 years who are making their living doing this, and they look it up to this 20-year-old kid, he's got to be able to command that huddle and command those guys. And doing these kinds of things now is how he gets to that point sooner rather than later. Yeah, and, and, and I would say it's easy to be drafted. It's not easy, you know, to bounce back from when this league hits you in the mouth, and it will. It will. And, and Indy – and he's a little jaded, man. Like Peyton Manning was, was a legit starter from day one. Andrew Luck was a better rookie quarterback than Peyton Manning was in 2012. This ain't going to be that. This ain't going to be that. And I think Indy needs to understand that, and I think they will. It's going to be a process. He's only 20. And they've got some nice pieces around him, Pittman and Taylor. But there's going to be some ups and downs. And I don't think a lot of wins are going to come this season. But the reality is you're going to be able to see if he's a real dude by Thanksgiving or Christmas. I don't necessarily think it's a sure thing that he starts week one. Jim Mercer kind of hinted that that would be his preference, but he did say it'd be Shane Steichen's call, and, and I think they'll lean on Shane Steichen in this regard. But it's going to be interesting to see how he handles adversity because he, the losses are going to pile up this year. How does he respond to that? That's what his teammates are going to want to see. 
You mentioned Peyton and Andrew Luck, both of uh, whom were groomed to be quarterback. Peyton, since he was four years you know, in the womb, uh, obviously, and Andrew Luck uh, as well. But Andrew Rich is a completely different, different style of quarterback. He brings different, different tangibles to the table as well. He can do some things that, that both of those guys couldn't do with his legs. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, a lot of people forget this, Andrew Luck, tested the same as cam newton at the combine now cam newton was 2011 luck was 2012 but we're talking about elite athletes right guys that are built to play tight end in a sense richardson's on a different level it's not a stretch to say he might be the most talented quarterback physically we've ever seen come into the league right if you watch wow. the highlight tape it's not hard to see all the things he can do that just make the game easier uh, and, and don't, you know, like, let's not get around the fact that Shane Steichen is excited to have Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson in the same backfield. But can he win from the pocket? You know, that's the biggest question. That was a very pointed question that Jim Irsay asked Shane Steichen in a very important pre-draft meeting. He said, can he become an outstanding passer? And Steichen walked him through why you change the mechanics, you scheme around it, why they believe he can. So, he doesn't need to be Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck from the pocket, but he's got to be pretty good, and that's the biggest step. So that's really what the next three months are about. Shane, Shane's ready to go with this kid. He'll be in town Thursday. They got rookie minicamp Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The first thing is going to be getting Shane with Anthony Richardson, get him in the playbook, and start on the fundamentals with him, shoring those things up as we move into minicamp in June and then training camp in late July. Any, I mean, you cover the NFL on a regular basis. I, I remember when Lamar Jackson was at Louisville and then following him in the NFL, and I'm not trying to compare these two guys, but I'm comparing what Lamar Jackson was able to, is able to do now and what he was able to become. You know, he's gone from being a runner with some throwing to a pretty damn good thrower and a really good runner the thing about his running that was always there, he never took a hit. I never saw him get hit. I'm like, he's like a snake. He just goes through and is able to not take a hit, which is wild. But he had Bobby Petrino, and he learned to throw the ball, and he can throw the ball. And he's got, obviously, the NFL provides you with much better tutelage. And I think that's that Anthony Richardson could be one of those guys if, if he can – learn to control those legs uh having them is one thing controlling them knowing when to use them is another yeah that's a good point about lamar he, he's a really good thrower and, and that's obviously sometimes the second part of the conversation with him because he's such a dynamic runner but the reality is what happened the last time the colts had a franchise quarterback who liked to run around a lot right like that is still fresh in their minds and and andrew was not good at that to his own credit or to his, you know, to credit, he, he admitted he took too many shots early on. He was too aggressive. He, he wanted the first down when he would have settled for, you know, it, it's better sometimes to slide and, and come up short. Um, the beating that he took and the beating that that shoulder took really changed the course of this franchise. So believe me, that's not left Jim Irsay's mind. It's not left Chris Ballard's mind. There's going to be a plan in place. And even though he's big, strong, and fast, and tall, and all those things, Anthony Richardson needs to learn – to be a little slippery when he gets outside the pocket because they do not want him taking those head-on shots with linebackers. What are your thoughts? You covered the team what, what, from, from this pick and what are everything else they've been able to add and what they already had. Um, this is probably as good as shape as they could have come out of this draft, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it was perfect, but yeah. going in, I mean, there's not a lot more that uh, I, I think that they could have done. I mean, 12 picks, man, like that's the most they've ever had in the modern draft era since 1970. That's, that's a lot. So they added a lot of competition to the roster. You know, one of the focuses they had was adding a lot of youth in the secondary. They drafted three corners. They drafted a safety. Like, look, it's going to be up and down with those guys. You know how punishing that position is early in their careers because the quarterbacks are better. The receivers are way better. The coaching's better. That's a tough position to play. That's a thankless position to be back there. Luckily, the Colts play a little bit of zone, which, which you know, gets these guys a little bit of help, a little bit. But, again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for Julius Brent and Daniel Scott and those guys. But we'll see. And 
The only concern I have is right guard, and I know that's not super sexy, but if you watch this team play last year, it kind of is because yeah. if you can't protect the quarterback, you know, what's the point? And, and I don't love Will Fries at that spot. We talked to Tony Sperano, the new O-line coach, last week, and he's like, I love, I love Will Fries, and it seems like it's his spot right now. I would have liked some competition there. I would have liked them to spend some money in free agency on a veteran who can just plug and play at that spot. I don't want to risk that inner pocket, right, left guard, center, right guard. I don't want to risk that being shaky because you've already got a left tackle who's a question mark and Bernard Ryman. So if I had to pick one nitpick, it'd be, le- it'd be right guard um, because banking on just running it back from what they had last year is the exact mistake they made last season. And that's worrisome. I know Richardson can make magic in the pocket and he can avoid a lot of pressure, but um, just because he's a great runner doesn't mean your line's better. Yeah, I'm sure it's a very sexy position to Anthony Richardson because that's very important right. to him and, and what he's doing. And it's very important to getting to to getting this era off to a uh, to the on the right start. He's got to be able to do that. Uh, you look back at the beginning of the Peyton uh, uh, Manning era. You know, uh, he threw the most interceptions for a rookie, but that's a different, probably a different story. It was half Peyton being Peyton, probably, but. Uh, uh, but but that's being a quote unquote freshman in the NFL. I mean that's a gigantic learning curve. Uh, what what's next for you and uh, for the Colts? Yeah, they got the rookie mini camp on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All eyes will be on the quarterback. But to be honest, I'm I'm excited to see the young corner Julius Brent, Indy guy, and and my favorite draft pick might be the third one, Josh Downs, the little receiver out of Carolina. They just haven't had a small receiver around here in a while. And I know T.Y. Hilton was, but this guy's going to be different. He's a different skill set. Ballard's never drafted a receiver under six feet. This guy's different. He's a Shane Steichen pick. I think he's going to be a lot of fun in this offense from that slot position. So we'll see what the rookies look like when we come in uh, Friday afternoon at the facility. Chris Ballard, uh, he certainly seems to have gotten the monkey off his back, of course, we have to let everything play out, but uh, from what we just talked about of the 12 picks and the talent they brought in, uh, I don't think anyone could have asked a lot more of him. Yeah, and he'll be the first to say, let's let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. But what he was able to do with the Gilmore pick that he got from Dallas and then kind of turn that into four fives, right? I mean, 12 picks is a lot. They attacked a lot. And like they say, the more darts you can throw at the dartboard, the better chance you have at succeeding. We'll see. But, you know, you like the backup swing tackle they got out of BYU. If these guys hit, they attacked a lot of good needs this weekend. 